with level access. Today, I wanted to talk about designing inclusive AR and VR experiences. Inclusive design is the practice of considering diversity when you're designing a product. In this case, we're thinking about people with disabilities. Uh, disability is a person's abilities uh, where there's a mismatch between those and the environment. And that environment uh, may be caused by uh, values placed on it by society uh, or other factors. Now, disability is a continuum of different needs. Some disabilities are temporary, some situational, and some permanent. When we think about inclusive design, we want to take into account the full range of human diversity. Uh, we want to recognize that there is often bias in how we design products, and we want to learn from other people so that we can make uh, our experiences more accessible to all people. Certainly, one size does not fit all. Uh, in fact, one size fits one, and we can extend that to other people. When you design inclusively, the outcome should be a product that is accessible to people with disabilities. We all benefit in this process. Accessibility really isn't a us versus them in terms of, oh, okay, we have to make our product accessible to people with disabilities. Now we have to sort of water it down or make it seem uh, ugly or boring. That's not the case. Uh, about 20% of the population uh, does have a disability, uh, but a lot of the things that we uh, have created for people with disabilities tend to have benefits for um, society in general. For example, think about closed captions, dark mode, larger text settings, those types of things. How you, you might use a mobile device in AR in uh, a brightly lit environment outdoors, etc. Um, there's also uh, the, the concept that inclusive systems are not separate systems. So what we're not talking about is creating a separate experience. We're talking about an experience uh, that may be flexible and adaptable and personalized to meet the user's specific needs. What are some of those uh, needs? So consider the following when designing. Uh, people may have limited or no uh, color perception or hearing, uh, vision, or dexterity, or vocal capabilities. Uh, in addition, some people may have limited cognitive or learning capabilities, uh, or neurological differences, uh, photosensitive uh, to flashing content, motion, uh, et cetera. So there's a wide range of human uh, diversity. As mentioned, one size definitely doesn't fit all. So the best thing to do is offer multiple ways to interact, to allow people with diverse capabilities to interact in the way that works best for them. I have a picture here of the Xbox adaptive controller, uh, which can be used with an Xbox system, but also can be used with some uh, AR, VR setups as well. Uh, and this particular device can allow people who can only use a single switch, maybe they're tongue or breathing in and out, or moving their head from side to side to control advanced user interfaces through something like this through a switch. Keep in mind that people with disabilities have a large spectrum of needs. Uh, and if you think about accessibility in terms of a particular group, you're likely missing the mark. Many people with disabilities have hidden disabilities. Uh, also consider if perhaps you're thinking about your, your AR or VR experience and you think, how could we possibly make this accessible to a group of people, perhaps people who are blind? Uh, consider that accessibility is a journey and uh, perhaps maybe consider incremental steps. How can we make this more accessible to people with uh, color blindness? How can we make this more accessible to people who are hard of hearing or a person perhaps who uses a wheelchair and start thinking from there. What kind of technology do people with disabilities use? Uh, people with techno uh, use technology in, uh, in the same way, but there might be some accessibility features or what we call assistive technology that sort of um, uh, things like text-to-speech, 
uh, speech input, large text, uh, keyboard interface access, those types of things. These are commonly built into platforms like iOS, uh, Android, uh, Mac OS, et cetera. Uh, it's best that they're built on the platform level because they have the, uh, the widest use there and there's very consistent use across an experience. Um, sometimes they're also built into browsers or video players. Uh, unfortunately, this is an area where we have a limitation right now in the AR, VR space where these features are not built into the platform. Sometimes assistive technology and features can also be third party, can be installed separately, uh, but there's not a lot of options currently uh, in this space. Uh, in addition, um, these tools often rely on things like object models or APIs to communicate information about the controls, their name, their role, who's speaking, that type of information to the system. So that object model and API interface needs to be there uh, as well. I would also finally mention that AR and VR can uniquely solve some of the challenges that people with disabilities have. Um, we want to think about uh, accessibility uh, and access by people with disabilities from a holistic standpoint. I have a picture here of the Xbox adaptive controller that I mentioned earlier. The controller is actually accessible uh, even from opening the packaging, uh, which is a really cool design that Able Gamers and Microsoft worked on together. You can open the package with uh, limited dexterity and with one hand. Um, so think about the whole experience, the whole out-of-box experience in terms of hardware accessibility, in terms of adjusting a headset or calibrating something for your experience, in terms of initial setup, account creation, uh, the path to turn on accessibility features. It's great if you have accessibility features, but if you can't easily turn them on, then they're not effective. Um, setting up an app, creating an account, all the different parts of this uh, will need to be accessible, including the app and the experience itself. Also, don't limit uh, accessibility to things like assistive technologies. Yes, a AR and VR can be great for therapy, can be great for assistive technology, but people with disabilities want to be doing all the same things that everybody else is doing. Uh, playing games, uh, getting education, uh, training, uh, any sort of business, retail, uh, consumer related things, uh, all these things, voice, uh, virtual assistants, et cetera, are all part and all should be um, accessible. There are specific benefits to people with disabilities in AR and VR that we maybe can't do in the real world. If you think about some of the challenges of accessing historic buildings uh, may not be able to be uh, wheelchair accessible. Uh, you may have uh, certain things like riding a mule down the Grand Canyon, which may not be possible. But with AR and VR, these experiences can be possible. Also think about disability in AR and VR. You can be uh, anonymous, that, that you have a disability. You can choose an avatar that represents you in whatever form you want that to be represented as. And it also helps to address social isolation. So there's a lot of positive things here uh, that can benefit. There are also some other types of assistive technology that I can briefly mention. Uh, AI and VR could be used for job coaching to assist people with cognitive and learning disabilities, could be used with emotional detection and job coaching for people with uh, autism spectrum uh, disabilities. Uh, there also could, there could be things like stare and edge detection for people with low vision, where you could highlight those areas I just think about the travel uh, preparation skills for people who, who are blind, who use a white cane, uh, sign language, and other uh, capabilities that people are working on. So there's a lot of great things, including uh, therapy uh, and uh, skill training as well. So how do you design a flexible and adaptable solution? Um, think about some of the input challenges you have, right? How can you move around in an app if you can't physically move? If you use a wheelchair, um, what are those ways that you can have locomotion within the app? Uh, what if you're not able to hold a controller? What are the other ways that you could interact with the experience? Um, some things like eye tracking won't work for some people. What are the other methods? I have an example here from an AR app 
uh, Wizards Unite, uh, where um, they have a, a separate screen where you can't hold up your mobile device to, to uh, interact with the creature, uh, you can have an alternative screen where you can still try to, uh, you know, do your gesture to, to uh, interact with the creature. So they have an alternative view that can be used for people, say, who have their mobile device mounted to a wheelchair. Um, just thinking about the inputs and sensors and how, uh, how things work, um, you can support game paths, uh, and that goes back to the Xbox adaptive controller that I mentioned earlier. There's certainly multiple methods of input uh, that you could use, including a keyboard interface, um, a controller, popping up an on-screen menu to allow people to, to move different directions using on-screen controls, uh, those types of things. Now, some people will benefit from eye tracking, head tracking, uh, gestures, uh, speech input. And some people will not be able to use this feature. So if you provide many different features, people will be able to pick for the one that works best for them. Uh, consider uh, when you're operating controls uh, about motion, movement, right? How can you reach something if you use a wheelchair? Uh, how can you reach something? How can you extend the reach for someone who, who uses a wheelchair or who might not be able to move? Uh, think about things uh, in terms of access by one hand uh, or uh, perhaps um, you know, not requiring multiple simultaneous actions, right? Uh, how can you complete an action in, in several different steps that might complete the same action? Or perhaps not require precise targeting or precise uh, motion or twisting uh, of the hand. Provide alternative means. Um, looking at output in terms of vision, right? Can you, you can enhance the visual experience for people with low vision. Uh, you can provide spatial audio for people who are blind. You can also have haptic, tactile feedback for people who are blind. Think about a fishing experience where the fishing rod is the controller and maybe it vibrates in a certain way to communicate that you have a fish on the line uh, as opposed to just communicating that visually. There's also other senses where, which I think will be more valuable uh, as they continue to be uh, brought into the AR and VR experiences. Here's an example of a low vision enhancement uh, where we have uh, increased contrast, large text. Um, we have options to change the color of text. This is a, uh, uh, a Unity plugin. It was developed by um, uh, Microsoft and Cornell Tech, something called Seeing v VR, uh, which provides a great example of how you can get some accommodations uh, put into an experience. Looking at other visual experiences, we're talking about changes in size and color uh, for people with low vision. Don't rely on color alone. Uh, provide audio cues. Uh, make sure there's a way to zoom in or magnify without ha having to physically get closer to something. Um, and then is there a way to identify what is an object or help you find or point to an object? I find that a ray cast is a helpful tool to help a person with low vision identify what is being pointed at with a controller. In terms of audio content and people who are deaf or hard of hearing, we want to think about closed captions and the closed captions in the in the, uh, the 3D space, the 360 degree space. Uh, who is speaking? Uh, where are the captions? Are they coming from behind you? Um, also in terms of visual indicators for sounds that may be going on indicating which direction the sound is coming from. Think about any communication features you have. Are there real-time communication features where people can, uh, can type or sign or maybe have spoken text converted to visual text uh, so they can read that information? Uh, think about all, also volume control for people who are hard of hearing. You may want to turn down those ambient sounds so they can focus on the more important sounds. And finally, with movement and motion, um, how can we slow down movement uh, or place information in a central location uh, to reduce motion sickness? Uh, how uh, can we um, uh, adjust the field of view uh, for people that works for them, perhaps because they have field loss or perhaps a different field of view uh, is better for them to prevent motion sickness? Um, and of course, 
how can we make, uh, if people moving around with a VR experience is a challenge, how can we allow them to stay stationary and also enjoy that experience? In terms of people with cognitive and learning disabilities, we want to think about tutorials, playgrounds, providing contextual help, icons with text, text-to-speech options, et cetera, to assist that group. Now, you're probably wondering, what's the current state of accessibility in uh, AR and VR? Uh, the access features are generally built into apps. They're very limited. Some apps have some features and not others. Uh, there's not really something at the platform level. We also have the challenge of the frameworks that things are created in, like Unity and Unreal, uh, and the limitations of those platforms. We also need a better work on an object model, as I mentioned earlier, in APIs to communicate information about objects. Sometimes the information will be too complex where we we'll actually need uh, artificial intelligence, so there will be more work that needs to be done there as well. What guidelines and standards can you use in thinking about this? Well, we do have some uh, extended reality uh, accessibility user requirements from the W3C. Uh, that's the first public draft. We do have the accessible player uh, experience uh, patterns from Able Gamers. Some of these things are related to games, but they can be extended uh, to the AR, VR space. And then we also have the web content accessibility guidelines, which may not directly apply word for word, but the concepts do apply to this particular space. So how can you get involved, get users with disabilities involved in your process, make sure they're, they're involved, uh, be part of the effort of some of the groups like XR Access, which is a community group collaborating on research and practices and user needs, and also involved with the W3C and some of the extended reality things they are doing. Thank you very much, and I look forward to an inclusive uh, AR-VR experience. Thank you.